So currently we're feeding approximately 100 cats in one section of Park Heights. The number fluctuates, there used to be a lot more. Some have disappeared, some have been adopted, but we're always looking for new cats because pretty much every week a new one or two or five turn up. So part of the job is feeding, making sure the area is clean, talking with the neighbors and providing some education when you have the chance, and mostly to be on the lookout again for new cats or for injured or sick cats so that we can intervene. So part of what we bring with us, you have to have a little bit of space, roughly 30 to 50 pounds of dry food if you only feed dry. You can have a, maybe 40 pounds of dry if you add some wet. I always like to add wet food because not everybody can or does and it's so much better for the cats. So if you can, it's great to bring a couple cases of wet food too and give them a little bit of that as a treat. They don't get a lot of great food out here on the street. You're gonna bring three to four gallons of water. You're gonna bring some empty trays bowls, disposable utensils, and I always carry a trap and a carrier with me just in case because again we never know what we're going to see and we kind of need to be prepared for everything. So I guess Tyler and Aaron are going to go ahead and feed this spot. We have two feeding stations in this alley and the cats are pretty clearly divided. There's the top half of the alley group and the bottom half of the alley group and every now and then they cross over but not too much. So we, uh, we do feed both locations and here's how it's done. We always want to maintain the feeding station as well. We put these disposable bins up and that helps keep flies, birds, bugs, whatever, out of the food. And then when the containers start looking nasty, we throw them away and replace them because we don't want the neighbors to complain about the trash. We want the, the cats to have the most sanitary conditions they can possibly have for this area. If you happen to look up on the porch, somebody's waiting for breakfast. Yeah, people get evicted and they just dump out all the, the owner's belongings and it sits there until a you know, crew comes by. This is called Callie's house. We used to be on that porch since this summer. This has got so trashed. We kind of moved the, the feeding spot over. The group trapped Callie, which is a calico cat, trapped her and spayed her, I was like some seven years ago. And she lived here up until this past year when she stopped showing up. And right now we do have our Park Heights uh, animal welfare group. And through that, we're always recruiting volunteers who can trap, who can foster, who can feed, and the group through Feline Rescue Association is able to provide a lot of food for feeders if you're unable to. But anybody who can provide their own or who can donate would always be welcome because you can't imagine the volume of food we go through every week. We're currently feeding four days a week, so Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday we feed enough for two days. Saturday we feed enough for one day and those are based on best estimates of the number of cats at each site. 
and we have an email blast so that everybody who feeds updates the site and lets everybody know what they've seen that week. So if there are new cats or something going on, the next group coming in will be aware. So it's a pretty good system and it's working well, but we still need more people who live in the area to get involved. And we just need more people in general to get involved. It's an ongoing project. It's very hard to sustain. Especially in the winter, we need people with four-wheel drive vehicles and people who don't mind being out in a neighborhood they might not normally be in. Uh, but we don't really have any trouble over here. Everybody knows we're here for the cats and we come in, we do our thing and we leave and try to keep the cats healthy. Here comes one of our little friends. Hi, baby. Snow. I know. Come on. No. No. He's like, are you coming to my restaurant? If you can see what we've done here, we put this piece of plywood up as a little bit of a protective barrier for the food. Because again, if we don't have a porch or something to put it under, we want some sort of container or cover to protect it from the elements. Because we feed when it's snowing, we feed when it's raining, and the cats are hungry even when the weather's terrible. So we do the best we can. As you can see, they're starting to rally for breakfast. This whole project started because of TNR, which is trap, neuter, return. So we do come in and alter and vaccinate and take care of the stray and abandoned cats in the neighborhood. Another part of what we do is spay and neuter for house pets because we found that that all contributes to the problem. The pets who are inside and not altered generally get put out at some point for behavioral issues like spraying or going into heat. So those indoor pets then become an outdoor situation as well. So we're trying to kind of stop the whole cycle by educating and working with the neighbors to help outdoors and indoors. A lot of people have indoor outdoor pets here, which I'm not a fan of, but they do. And when they're not altered, they're also adding to the cycle of reproduction and cats reproduce way more quickly than we can keep up with them. So again, that's another thing we do. And another thing we need help with is the transport of the house pets for spay and neuter. We make the arrangements for the appointments. We give you pre-op and post-op instructions, but we do need help with transporting these animals to and from because that's very time consuming and really a completely separate process from the trapping part of it that we do. And we do one large trapping event every month and often more than that in between when the needs are there, especially for injured cats. So it seems a bit like a nonstop job, but we keep chipping away at it. We always need help though. That's our biggest problem right now is everybody's tired. We've been doing this a long time. So we kind of need some fresh blood and some, some new energy. And as soon as Tyler places the last of the food in there, these guys will scurry over and have breakfast. <laughs> Aw, they're talking to us. Go eat, baby. Go eat. Go eat, chunky monkey. Go ahead. That one's not very graceful. She's trying to walk on the pipe and she's slipping off. There we go. Here's the little one. That one's so cute. Come on. You'll notice too that all the cats at this site are ear tipped on the left ear and that tells us that they have all been altered and vaccinated. That's the universal sign. So we're always on the lookout for two little points. That means we have work to do.
As we mentioned earlier, we always want to make sure the cats have fresh water. That's important year round. And one of the other things cats need outside is shelter. In a neighborhood like this, where there are lots of abandoned shelters, homes, porches, whatnot, they do tend to find shelter, thank goodness, so they can survive the winter. In other neighborhoods where you don't have this, we like to provide the insulated shelters um, that are homemade. You can also take sort of a dog house and and fashion it into the same sort of thing, but you need to be able to insulate it and have smaller openings so there's not a lot of draft and the rain and snow can't get in. But there are lots of ways to help our, our friends get through the winter, but they do need our help. This is a pretty good feeding site because it's covered, they're protected, it's elevated. We have quite a few cats here and we have consistently. And as you can see, they're starting to uh, pour in. <laughs> Go eat, baby. Go eat, pretty girl. Oh, look. <laughs> Are you creeping around the corner, little one? Oh, that one's so little. Is that one tipped? Yeah. Okay. That one just looks so tiny. Yeah. Aw. We have another site in back of here because there are so many cats at this location and again they tend to like to split up their feeding sites and that's part of what we have to respect as well, figure out who gets along, who doesn't and how far apart to space the sites. So it's kind of a constant process of just being vigilant and letting everybody else on the team know what's going on. I only see the torty and the tabby back there right now. No tuxedo. If, but if you guys take the food back, he may pop out. If he does, I'll grab a trap. But right now, it's just the two girls. Completely trashed, and they came through and cleaned it out at some point. Uh, This is lovingly called Black Cat Continent because at one point all we had were black cats. At its peak, I think about 16 regulars. Now there are quite a few fewer cats. We have a couple tabbies and every now and then a white cat, so it's no longer completely exclusively Black Cat Continent, but it still keeps that name. So as you can see, we have multiple stops along this route. But it really only takes about an hour or an hour and a half if you're quick. Some people can do it in an hour if you do the speed route. If you want to spend a little more time getting to know the cats or checking them out, it takes a little longer. But it's really a fairly small commitment of time and it makes a huge difference in the lives of these cats. Once we put them back out and they've been TNR'd, we want to make sure they have some quality of life. And this is really the only way that we can help do that. So if you visit our website, there are updates all the time about things that are going on. There's a wish list there for things we need. And we always need help. You can foster, you can adopt, you can volunteer to feed, you can help trap, you can help transport, and you can donate money, you can donate food, you can donate old, old towels and linens and things like that. There are so many things we need. So keep an eye on the wish list, keep an eye on the updated cats and what's going on, and we'll keep you posted. And hopefully at some point, if you have a little free time, try to get involved. It's very rewarding to know that we're making a slight difference because these animals don't have a lot to look forward to here. And hopefully by keeping them healthy and preventing them from breeding, we're improving their quality of life just a little bit.